What's happening guys, Scott Bancroft here. Welcome back to another video. Hope you had an excellent weekend. It's excellent to see you. And in today's video, I'm gonna be telling you how to take your photos from Lightroom, pop them into Photoshop, and then have those Photoshop edits come back into Lightroom so you can store it as a catalog or have you organize your photos. So let's dive on straight into Lightroom now. We're not gonna mess about. I'm gonna show you a super quick way how to do that. So some of you probably already know how to do this or you've seen the function, but you just didn't know how it worked. There's two ways to get your Lightroom photos into Photoshop to further edit them, whether you're putting on some extra design features such as clouds, rains, or moons, or you just wanna color correct in Photoshop because that's what you're used to. So the first way, and it's the way I used to do it, is you go File, Export, and you export as a .psd file and you decide what sizing and what clarity you want it and it opens it up in Photoshop. This is the way that I used to do it before I started using Lightroom as a way to collect my photos and organize them into folders. It would create a .psd, I'd have a folder within Finder and that's how I'd organize my Photoshop files. But now, a super easy way to do it, it's been around for ages but I've only just started using it because now I'm enjoying being able to take my Photoshop edits and bring them back into Lightroom. So the way we're gonna do this is on the thumbnail at the bottom part of our screen, we're gonna right click and go edit in and whatever your latest Adobe Photoshop is, mine is Adobe Photoshop 2020. For this to work, you're most likely gonna need an Adobe Cloud subscription. For those of you that are on the edge of whether you're gonna get it or not, it is super worth it. I know back in the day, you could buy the fixed Photoshop product and the fixed Lightroom product and you had it forever. But if you're using Photoshop every day like I am, it is worth the money because you're going to get all the upgrades, you're going to get all the new versions and every little bug is going to be fixed right away. So let's go edit in Photoshop and it's going to go and open up Adobe Photoshop for you. So we've got our photo up here, it's got the file name and it's now made it a .dng which is still the raw format for Adobe so you're going to have all that excellent pixel quality. I was gonna go ahead and color grade this photo using the different functions, but it was gonna to take too long and you wouldn't really see that much of a difference unless we had to zoom in. So let's put a few obnoxious little things in the sky, such as a moon and some clouds. That way, when we go back into Lightroom, you can see the difference between the two photos. So I'm gonna select the brush tool. The hotkey for that is B, and I'm gonna go in and select a custom brush. I'm actually using a couple of custom brushes from Visuals of Julius. I've only just recently got them, they're on sale and they are definitely worth the money. I'll pop the link in the description below as well as the Instagram, that way you can see his products and see his photography. They really are quite amazing. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna select moons and let's find a half shape moon. I'm not gonna go super crazy on it, I'm just gonna maybe go a light gray for it. Brush size is looking big enough. We're just gonna pop it there in the top right hand side of the screen. And there we go, we now have a moon. And it's not bad. You're taking something as simple as photography and making it artwork when you add in these little things. There is no way that this is possibly realistic, having a moon this big, this bright, especially when it's golden hour still, it just isn't gonna work. But this is where we're turning photography into artwork. Who says we can do it? I can. My photo, I think it looks cool. Everyone's gonna have a differing opinion. And you know what, let's pop a little second moon in there. It's the moon's moon, if that's even a thing. We'll pop that little one in right there as well. Oh, that one's too big. Let's not be ridiculous now. Yeah, there we go, that's looking cool. Now we're gonna add one more element into the sky and that's a bit of cloud to even up that sky. So we're gonna create a new layer. We're gonna find a new custom brush again by Visuals of Julius. And we're gonna select this cloud here, cloud 12 looks a bit overcasty. And now all we have to do is create the brush size that we want and then just click and those clouds are inserted into the photo. It doesn't look terribly realistic because it's in front of the buildings. But an easy way to fix that is click the effects button in the bottom right and that's gonna bring up some blending options for your photo. I'm gonna use this section here, blend if gray. And if the underlying area between black and white, if that's what the underlying color is, blend it. So I'm gonna bring this dark one up and you can see how that building starts to pop through the clouds. But now it starts chipping away at the top right. So what we can do is with this little slider that we're using, press and hold option or alt if you're on a PC and now you can split it and it creates a really nice feather and a smooth transition. 
And now it's about just cleaning it up. We'll use the layer mask onto that cloud layer and we're just gonna brush away that cloud so it looks nice and smooth. Nothing fantastic, nothing extraordinary about this photo, but just a simple way to show you how we're gonna move it back into Lightroom. So all we have to do is press file and save or use the hotkey command S and it's gonna save itself. Now all we've got to do is patiently wait for it to save, go back into Lightroom and it's gonna appear right next to the photo that you were originally editing on. That way it creates a copy because if you come back tomorrow and you don't like those photoshops, you realize oh, that second moon just isn't doing it for me right now, you have that original photo still there. And there we have it. It's loaded back up into Lightroom now. We can see it's right next to our original photo that we're editing. And it's gonna show up as one of two, which is your new one. And then two of two is your original. You'll notice though on our new photo, it's got none of the sliders changed from the original. It's because it's a brand new photo to Lightroom. So don't worry about applying those lens corrections and chromatic aberration because it saved all that data from the original and it put that into Photoshop. Now all you got to do is tweak a few more colors if that's what you want to do. Crop it for Instagram. Remember 4x5 is a really nice format for Instagram. And there we have it. You've just learned how to take Photoshop adjustments back into Lightroom so it's there in your catalog. So if you liked today's video, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or if you haven't clicked it and you're just busy lurking on the channel to see what video is coming up next, all your support definitely does help. See me on Instagram at scottbancroft underscore for stories when a new video is up and I'll see you guys in the next video.